Hey guys, it's Chris at the lab. I haven't posted a video in a little while, so I just kind of wanted to <clears throat> give you guys an update, let you know what's happening, what I'm doing, all that kind of good stuff. Um, so yeah, I wanted to show you guys some finds that I've gotten recently. First one is this little guy here. Very cool. So I got this for forty dollars at a yard sale. It's the op. Um, it's the um, Optilec Clearview 500. Uh, basically, it's a microscope used for mostly for people um, needing to see things that can't read things, I guess, or maybe I think that's what it's mostly for. Well, anyway, very cool little device. I'll just show you guys here. I might upgrade it to an LCD, but the cool part about it is it's got a Wells Gardner 7203 monitor in it, which is very cool. I'll post some pictures of it down below. So as you can see, you can zoom right into this thing. Hit the focus. And there you have it. It's got a bunch of different features. Goes into kind of different modes. It's great. So anyway, got that guy. Been very helpful. But some cool test gear I've gotten recently that I'm kind of working on. Uh, let's kind of go through them here. We got the Ico 944 flyback and yoke tester. Now this guy here, this one's not working, but in a weird story, I've actually purchased two of these in the last couple of days. This guy is one here, and this one's fully functioning. Um, as you guys know, I do a lot of arcade monitor repair, CRT monitor repair, stuff like that. So very helpful to have a flyback tester. Um, so I got two of them. The other one's not working. This one works perfect. Very neat. Also, I came across this Heathkit Vectorscope. Now the cool thing about this Vectorscope is not the scope part, but the fact that it has a cross test pattern generator for vector monitors. Uh, crossbars color, or for color and black and white. So very cool. I rebuilt this and it's working perfectly. Um, some of my other test gear, as you guys probably have already seen. But yeah, so very cool thing is this Ico 955. So this guy here, it's got the uh, Magic Eye tube, uh, test capacitance, test short and open capacitors. Uh, it's got an RC balance here the old style knob there, line adjust for your input line voltage because it's very sensitive to what the input line voltage is. Now, um, on the back here, don't know too much about the circuit. It um, has a couple tubes here. This is the I-tube, which is an ICO tube, 6FG6 tube, um, and then uh, some kind of power tube. Uh, what is this, a C64? EC90. So uh, I just kind of, it's not really working. It's powering up, it doesn't do much, and I suspect that this capacitor here is probably completely leaky. So we are going to throw this capacitor on that guy right there, the Heathkit IT11 cap checker. Now this will tell us if we have a leaky cap. Or what's going on? So let me get some let me get some cables here somewhere. Where are these bad boys? I'll turn this guy on. Let her warm up. Now this is a 350 volt cap. We're going to turn this down. We're going to go to leakage. Let our eye warm up, which should be happening any moment. There we go. There's our magic eye. Oh, before I test this cap, also, guys, so we got the um, another VTVM. So I got kind of two of these in the works right now that I'm going to rebuild. Um, this one here is uh, Leader Electronics. It's the LV-76A. So we're going to go through that in a future video. And then also over here, I have the Dynascan. Um, VTVM, which we're going to rebuild in another video. So just kind of some up and coming things. Okay, so let's test this cap and see what's happening. They've nicely, nicely marked it for negative and positive. So here we go. Now, as you guys know, or you may not know, the way this works is this 
um, green eye, magic eye. When it stays open, it means that the cap is functioning and it's not leaking, it's holding back its DC voltage correctly. And of course you don't want the positive lead falling off, so let me get that on there better. So right now we're at three volts. So we're gonna start cranking it up and see, see where we get. It still seems to be okay at 10 volts. Okay, now see how it's kind of slowly starting to open? So we're at 100 volts, give or take here, and the eye is completely closed and is not opening. This is a 350 volt cap, so we can safely assume this cap is leaky as a mofo. Okay, so if we go down a little bit, so it seems to be okay at around, probably around 75 volts. As we get to 100, boom, done. Obviously the higher we go, the worse it will get, so we're not even gonna bother. Completely leaky, cap no good. So we're gonna discharge that and get it off there. So this cap here in the circuit, I'm not entirely sure. It was bridged here between the, oh, hang on. Okay, sorry about that guys, I had some pizza arrive. I actually had forgotten all about it, and so it's right there, in Pizza Hut. Oh yeah, and also I'm using a new monitor. It's probably hard to see in this picture how how big this thing is, but a good friend of mine let me use it, and um, it's a touchscreen ELO monitor. Very cool. I built a little shelf on top of it here for stuff. Um, yeah, so we'll get into that in another video. <clears throat> So basically, this filter cap, I think this is a filter cap, it's tied uh, from the chassis, basically from the chassis into this terminal strip right here, which goes off to the capacity short and open test. So having that capacitor uh, very leaky would certainly affect how this thing works. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna see if I can find something that we can put in there. Another thing I noticed, I gotta look on the schematic and find out what the purpose of this tube is. I'm sure it has something to do with a uh, rectifier of some kind. Um, very loose in the socket. When I open it, it was just kinda hanging there like that. So we're gonna take a look at that. We're gonna clean those tubes and fix them up. Uh, we're going to take a look at all the joints. Just kinda make sure everything's going well and looking good, all the connections and joints. Everything else looks really good in this unit, so we're not gonna need to do too much. We're gonna change those caps. That little cap there, that turquoise guy, 0 0.05 microfarad to 400 volt. I'm not sure what kind of cap that is off the top of my head. I'm gonna have to look that up. Uh, we may have to change that. We're gonna test some of these resistors, see if they're still in spec. Also noticed, let me see here if I can show you guys. I also noticed this connector right here. It's hard for you guys to see what I'm talking about here, but it's very kind of flimsy, flamsy, almost like the cord is broken there. So I'm gonna take a look at that and replace that. Normally I would swap out this connector with a BNC. Um, I even have some right here. However, a lot of connectors I've been getting lately, it came with its own connector. So I might, you know, I don't know. I don't really love these connectors. Uh, the BNCs are obviously standard now, so I might just go ahead and change that out too. So let me see if I can find a few caps. Uh, while I'm doing that, like I said, just some new uh, new gear in the works. Um, you know, we got the Ico 430 um, sweep scope there. We got the Ico 944. We got the Ico 955. So we got lots to do. So I just wanted to touch base with you guys, say what's up, uh, let you know that I'm still here. I'm planning on putting some videos up uh, this winter. We're gonna be doing a lot of stuff, a lot of videos. We're gonna be looking at that Atari monitor down there, which is the X1411, very rare monitor. Doesn't even have, uh, just says sample on the back of it. Another friend of mine gave that to me and to rebuild for him. And so we're gonna kind of rebuild that, get it back, looking as best as we can, and then probably sell it. Some of this other gear up here is going to be rebuilt. Just all kinds of crazy stuff. And, you know, I don't know. 
I don't really love these connectors. Uh, the BNCs are obviously standard now, so I might just go ahead and change that out too. So let me see if I can find a few caps. Uh, while I'm doing that, like I said, just some new uh, new gear in the works. Um, you know, we got the Ico 430 um, sweep scope there. We got the Ico 944. We got the Ico 955. So we got lots to do. So I just wanted to touch base with you guys, say what's up, uh, let you know that I'm still here. I'm planning on putting some videos up uh, this winter. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff, a lot of videos. We're going to be looking at that Atari monitor down there, which is the X1411, very rare monitor. Doesn't even have, uh, just says sample on the back of it. Another friend of mine gave that to me and to rebuild for him. And so we're going to kind of rebuild that, get it back, looking as best as we can, and then probably sell it. Some of this other gear up here is going to be rebuilt. Just all kinds of crazy stuff. So that's it for now, guys. I will be back.